To begin with, may I suggest that uh, we do a round of applause for those people who have sponsored this. It's so much work and we should appreciate them. Today we are fortunate to have with us John Turner. He teaches religious studies at George Mason University in Virginia. And his history that we are discussing today is a very important contribution. I am impressed. And it's hard to impress me. I taught Utah history for 34 times at the University of Utah. The, uh, his first book, Bright, Bill Bright and Campus Crusade for Christ, the Renewal of Evangel Evangel Evangelical um, in Postwar America. It was a prize winning book. He's a graduate of Notre Dame they'll be in our minds today with football. Um, he is from New York State, upstate, as they call it. Not really very far from where um, uh, Brigham Young worked and not far from Palmyra. Well, his insight and balance we'll talk about later on in the program. Uh, the other commentators are Greg Craig Foster, author of two books, Penny Tracks and Polemics, a critical analysis of anti-Mormon pamphleteering in Great Britain, 1837 to 1860, and A Different God Question, Mitt Romney, The Religious Right and the Mormon Question. He also co-authored with Newell Bringhurst, Mormon Quest for the Presidency, and also with uh, uh, Bringhurst, The Persistence of Polygamy, a Mormon Anthology. He worked for the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, and there uh, he did research, genealogical research, on some dignitaries. Um, John Ashcroft, George W. Bush, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Walter Cronkite, Sean Hannity, Charlton Heston, Larry King, Henry Kissinger, Brian Stokes, Mitchell, Barack Obama, Kevin Rudd, Jahan Sadat, Mike Wallace, Barbara Walters, and Oprah Winfrey. And he can be uh, awarded the prize of the damnedest name dropper in Utah. <laughs> Our other panelist is Jeff Johnson, who is retired from the LDS Church Historical Department, where he worked for more than 20 years. He is also a, was also a member of the staff of the Utah State Archives and served as director for 14 of those years. He was an archivist at the Cherokee National History Society. He has published historical articles in Sunstone, Expon Exponent 2, Dialogue, and a Journal of Modern Thought, in the, as well as the Encyclopedia of Mormonism. We will begin today with our illustrious author, John Turner. Thank you, uh, Floyd, and thank all of you for coming. I thought I would take just a little bit of time and tell you a couple of stories from my biography of Brigham Young. It, and I, I think I'll just say a few things about how I got interested in the project. I didn't know all that much about Mormonism or Mormon history five years ago, but a few things gave me a desire to uh, explore uh, the Mormon past. And as I started to do so, it did not take me long to concentrate my interests on Brigham Young. And he was a man, I quickly learned, who spoke in tongues some, 30, some 70 years 
before the American Pentecostal movement, who presided over the colonization of a thousand mile stretch of the American West, whose political actions prompted an American president to send one fifth of the US Army to Utah, and who married some 55 wives along the way. And, you know, if the story were fiction, it would be utterly preposterous and require a rather intense suspension of disbelief. And yet it was true. I, I thought I would uh, share with you two episodes uh, from Brigham Young's uh, life that I think shed some light on his rather complex personality and approach to leadership. The first is from November of 1847 on the banks of the Missouri River in what at the time was Indian Territory. The previous several years had been traumatic and full of change for the church and for Brigham Young. Joseph Smith's murder, uh, first and foremost, a struggle for succession uh, for Brigham Young, uh, an additional 40 or so marriages, uh, the expulsion of the Latter-day Saints from Nauvoo, the deaths of hundreds of Mormon refugees on the Trail West, faith testing, poverty, and hunger. As of fall 1847, however, there was cause for new optimism. Uh, the previous summer, Young had led a group of nearly 150 uh, pioneers to the Salt Lake Valley, establishing uh, a sanctuary for his church. That fall, uh, Young decided to reconstitute uh, what his church calls the First Presidency, a church president with two uh, counselors. After Joseph Smith's murder, the people had chosen the 12 apostles to lead the church in Smith's absence. Young, as the president of the 12, quickly became the de facto uh, president of the church. But after several years, he wanted to clarify and streamline uh, ecclesiastical leadership. So after his successful pioneer trek to the Great Salt Lake Valley, he asked the other apostles to affirm him as church president. Almost all of the other apostles opposed Young's proposal, which would augment his authority at the expense of some of their own. One apostle, a man named Orson Pratt, explained that he thought of the apostles as something akin to the House of Representatives. And Young, therefore, should be more like the Speaker of the House than a president. Shit on Congress was Young's response to Orson Pratt. It was not a warmly received uh, suggestion. It has occurred to me that if Mitt Romney had made that his slogan for his campaign this year, instead of the rather bland Believe in America, he would be on his way to a massive landslide. Everybody could get on board with that. So. Young, by the way, used to say that he only swore uh, when he was in the pulpit, which, which wasn't true. He also swore at other times I like to say that I only swear when I quote Brigham Young, which, which pretty much is true. <laughs> back, to, back to the story. I am the head, Young told the other apostles. You are the belly. His message was simple. Get in line or get out of the way. Those were the only two options. Uh, the apostles got in line, and Young became... Uh, the even more unquestioned uh, leader of his church. My other story is from four years later, the summer of 1851 uh, in Salt Lake City. And it's a rare example of a church member 
willing to question uh, Young's authority. President